Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go over a couple of very important things and I want to make sure today you will learn the steps. Even though you're familiar with it, we'll do a review of the steps and we'll go over a couple of quick games and do some more tactics, okay? Lots of tactics we're going to do today, okay? Discoveries, double checks, many different ideas. So again, when, when we start the game, so I want everyone to focus here on the screen and when you start the game, what is the most important thing you should try to do first? First, the, what's the most important thing you need to do? Control the center of the board. Okay, great. What are squares that we can see to the center? Uh, wait, what was the question? What squares is the center? Uh, the four in the middle. So this square, right? Yeah. So let's name this square so we know. E4, D4, D5, E5. These four squares in the in center of the board, this is the center, okay? So that's what you want to do. Now, let's say we control the center. And now he goes knight f3. Second step after we do that would be, what is the second step? Develop your minor pieces. Minor pieces, okay. Everybody should know what are the minor pieces. Minor pieces are the knights and the bishops. Remember, knights and bishops, these are the minor pieces. Okay, so remember that. These are your minor pieces. So we develop your knight, knights. Now, there's a very nice game I want to show you here. Black plays d6, bishop g5, bishop c4 played. And now, player with the black pieces plays this move, h6, because he's worried about the knight jumping here and attacking on f7. Some players will do that, you know, they will play this move just to stop the knight from coming in. So you continue developing. And then he goes bishop g4. Now, when he plays bishop g4 here, now what you're going to do here, huh? Think about what you're going to do. White to play and find the combination that will lead to a winning a pawn or winning the game via checkmate, okay? So you have a very nice combination here that you can try to do here in order to win. It's a famous uh, trap here that white has if black plays like this. I'll give you a little bit of time to think here. What can you do here? Because he has played this h6 move, which is not a very good move here, okay? So you have to think about it. Yes? Pawn h3? Well, if you go pawn h3, he just goes back. It's something tactical, okay? It, it's something tactical, something maybe perhaps a sacrifice, okay? You need to look for, okay? Not just a regular move, some sacrifice idea. What can we sacrifice here because we have some attack? That's a tough one, but I want to give you some time to think. Yes? Knight e5. Excellent. Very good start. Knight takes c5, she takes the pawn. Now, let's see. If black takes right away, now we can take the bishop. And we're going to end up with the extra pawn, okay? Because we want a pawn. So that's the position. So that's why when this happens, most of your opponents, they're going to be, wow, they're going to take the queen. They're going to take your queen. Most of your opponents, that's what they're going to do. They're going to take your queen. And now, who can find the checkmate in two here? Checkmate in two. Who can find the mate in two now? Imagine that he made a blunder now taking your queen and you can win this game in two moves. In order to checkmate, we need to start, we have to find a check first, right? So I want you to find the check first here. Yes. Check. Now, can he take it? Yes. No. Can he take your bishop? Yes. Yes. No, protected. He can't take. Can he go here? No. No. So he can't go here. What's the only thing he can try to do now? What's the only thing he can try to do now? King E7. Absolutely. King E7 only move. And now, you should see it now. You should see that now the checkmate here.
In order to checkmate, you need to find a check here, right? So can you see the check now? Can you see the check? And what do you say after that checkmate. move? Checkmate. See how that works? Check. Let's see. Can he go here? No. Why? Bishop. Can he go here? No. Can he go here? No. Can he go here? No. No, right? Can you block a check with a knight? Remember, knight check cannot be blocked, and the pawn check cannot be blocked. Other checks with the rook, bishop, and queen, they can be blocked, but not the knight check. And now after you do this, game is over. He cannot do anything. It's a miniature, okay? It's a very nice miniature you have to try to remember, okay? Seven moves, seven moves. Very, very nice, okay? Now. Now, we're going to look at a couple of more games like this, okay? So, let's see. Now, d4, f5. I mentioned this before in my lectures about this opening. But let's see if you can remember, or maybe you know actually, what is the name of this opening? When Black plays this move f5 against d4, and today I want to also talk about openings, so you know like a lot of these names and... So it will be good for you to know. Like, what's the name of this opening? opening? Dutch defense. When black plays, usually it's a defense, right? So Dutch defense. Dutch defense. Very good. So this is the Dutch defense. Now there is a very nice trap here, okay? That I want you to know. White goes bishop g5. Huh. And what a moment it looks like. Wait a minute. We can just attack. And now black gets really excited, thinking, okay, I'm going to win the bishop. So he goes g5. You go back, he goes f4. And it looks like, what is really white doing here? He's going to lose his bishop now. Can you find a strong move here? This is actually very bad for black. Can you find a move here? Yeah. In fact, here actually, even in this position, can you find a strong move for white to create his own threat? Very nice idea. Yes? Well, he's going to take your bishop if you move the knight. Yes? Queen d2? Queen d2, but what if he takes the bishop? What can we do? So we don't want to do that yet, right? So it's a quiet move. You make this quiet move and you open a line for your piece. And he has a very strong threat here. Can you see that? What black is doing is playing a very dangerous game. He's weakening the position of his king. Okay? And you can do something to take advantage of it. Yes? Pawn e3? Pawn e3? You push the pawn and it's going to be like, okay. He takes your bishop, and now why is this move losing? Because um, white can do queen h5. Uh -huh. He goes queen h5 and says checkmate. Okay? I actually played this position. I got to this point, you know? I got to this point, and I was really hoping my opponent would take. So I can go checkmate, but he didn't do that. He went knight f6. So he stopped that idea, okay? But I, I played this, this move, bishop g5. It's very interesting. Okay? Bishop g5, here. So he goes here, you play this quiet move. But you open up the diagonal. Okay? And you go for the checkmate. And if he takes, what do we do now? Queen 
we go queen h5 and say checkmate okay another little trap okay that you can use to win a game now now we're gonna look at the, another famous it's a game okay so white goes e4 so this is you probably most of you play e4 first move right so knight f3 played do you know what to do do you know what to do when opponent plays this bad move f6 how to punish this move because it's a really bad move here anybody know this okay so let's try to think so we can see what can we do here this move is practically losing but you need to know how okay you need to know how to take advantage of it okay let's see when you think you have it raise your hand yes bishop, bishop c4 bishop c4 it's going to be a good decent move it's developing but better okay better what else you can try to do bishop c4 is good what else Yes. H4? Idea is good. Idea is good. But I know you want to go queen h5 check. But he will stop you by playing g6. He will stop you. Okay? So that's not something else we need to do here. Let's, let me give you a little bit more time to think. What else you can try to do? Yes. Knight g5. Knight g5. He takes. Okay. It's a tactical idea. It's a tactical idea. We're going to start with the sacrifice here, okay? So we need to find a sacrifice. Let's see a sacrifice. Yes. Knight e5. Correct. Knight takes e5, right? Knight takes e5. Very good. So he's going to accept the sacrifice. He's going to take. Now, when he does that, what do you do now? when he takes and accepts your sacrifice when he takes and accepts your sacrifice no when you sacrifice you have to go for checks try to find something that you can do attacking you can't just start developing normally because you just give up a piece for a pawn you have to try to do something active okay in the back Five check, correct, check. Now, black has two options here. Let's analyze both of these options. If he plays g6, who can tell me why this move is bad? No, no, it's white to move. He goes here, it's white to move. Why is this bad? What can you do with the queen, huh? Think about it. What can you do with the queen? Check, and what do we call this in chess? Double attack, double attack double. or fork. fork. Very good. So remember, double attack or fork. So you win the rook. He comes here, that's it, we win the rook too. 
Two pawns and a rook. So game is over. White is winning here. So he has to go here. Now. Now, what can you do here? Yes? Dink, dink. Is this the best check you have? No. Dink, is this the best check that you have? OK. Well, he just say that. <laughs> he just say that move. You have something better. He just say that move, you know, but you have something better. Because he goes knight f6. Yes? Queen Correct. Queen takes e5 check. Now, he has only one square to go to. And that square is f7. Now continue. When you have an attack like this, you don't slow down. You continue with the initiative here and try to see if you can try to checkmate the king very quickly here. Yes? Queen f5? No, 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 no. See, try to get more pieces involved. You don't want to just <laughs> go <laughs> queen check, yeah? Try to get more pieces in. Because with one queen, we cannot checkmate. We need more pieces in, right? That's what we need. Yes? Bishop c5 and bishop c4. Bishop c4, correct. Check. Now. He's trying to go here. Bishop d5 doesn't do anything. Bishop takes. So he's trying to go here. He's trying to escape so he doesn't get checkmated. What are you going to do now? Can you find the most effective way to checkmate him? Yes. In the back. Yeah. Um, bishop, bishop to e2. Well, you don't want to go back. Try to keep the initiative going. Try to find another check. Try to find another check. Uh, queen, queen to e five. Good check. Good check, though, yeah? Yeah, but the pawn will take it. Yeah, you don't go here. He'll take you. Who can find a good check here, huh? To push this king more to the corner. Who can find a good check here? Perfect. He goes here. Now. Now his king is in really strange position. What should we do till we say check again? And bring another piece into the game here, huh? What can we do to bring another piece? Not the ones we already have in the game. Another one. D3 or D4, doesn't matter. OK, check. Now, he's going to go g5 to block it. Queen g5 is just bad because of which move? Checkmate. Right? Bishop is guarding it. So he has to go here now. What do you do now? Now you have a strong move. You're going to get another piece now involved into the attack. And after this, it's going to be very difficult for him to do anything. If you get one more piece in here, that would be great. Think, think, which piece you want to get in? Which piece you can get in? Yes. Bishop g5? Yeah, but bishop g5, queen takes. So it's protected, yeah? In fact, if it, it wasn't protected, you can just go queen g5 mate. But it's protected. Yes? Knight c3. Yeah, but knight c3, it's not really helping us. It's too far away from the king, OK? What else? Think about it. It's, an, it's, it's not a very easy move to find, but you can do it. Think, what can you do here to try to attack him a little bit more? You. Excellent. H4. Now, you're getting this rook into the game as well, right? Yeah. And now you're threatening discovery checks. So let's say he go here, d6, attacking you, checkmate in two. Now, checkmate in two. Let's see who can find it here. And next move I want you to find is a double check. Double check. Who 
who can find the double check and explain afterwards what is a double check? Yes? G5. Uh, G, what G5? Pawn G5. Pawn takes G5. What does pawn takes G5 do? Double check. And what is double check? When two pieces are checking at the same time. Correct. And when that happens, what is the he needs to do here? Move. That's the only thing he can do. When, right? The only thing you can do is a double check to move your king. If you cannot move your king anywhere, that's checkmate. So he goes here now, and let's see now. Checkmate in one. Give you a little bit time to think. A little bit time to think to find it. One move, and the game is over. Okay, go ahead. Queen to F6. Wait, F6. Oh, what about knight takes? I can take if you go here. You're close, but better. Queen F7. That is a checkmate. Right? King cannot go anywhere and cannot take the queen because it's protected by the bishop, okay? And that's it. He cannot do anything. Okay, very good, very good. Now, we learned a couple of miniatures today, okay? A couple of miniatures, like, you know, 7 move, 11 move. Now, it's time to do some tactics, okay? So, we're going to be doing many different tactics, okay? And we're going to start off with an idea that is called uh, decoy sacrifice, okay? Decoy is when you sacrifice something to force opponent piece where you want it to go. Okay? And also, when he's protecting something, you sacrifice and he moves away. So let's start off with this first position here, okay? You have. So this position looks very bad for white because these rooks are very active and he's threatening to go here and checkmate in one move. But you have a very nice idea. And after this idea, you're going to be able to checkmate in two moves, OK? White to play, checkmate in two. Remember, there is a, if you check, he can escape here. So there is no background checkmate, OK? King can go here. So if you're planning to just say check, that's not a checkmate, he escapes. So you need to do something better. You need to sacrifice something to force opponent piece to a certain square you want to. And that is called decoy sacrifice. Okay? Decoy sacrifice here. So we'll do a couple of decoys today. Okay, yes. Ah, that's a nice idea, but let's, let me change this. It, it, it's good for you, but you're not going to be able to checkmate, let's say, in two moves. Yeah, you can capture the queen here. So, but our goal is to checkmate in two moves. Okay, so let's say that there's a pawn here, you can capture. So what do you really do here to checkmate in two moves? That is your goal. Your answer should be checkmate in two, okay? And remember, he's threatening to come here and say, checkmate. He is threatening to do that. OK, let's see. It's a very nice move. It's a brilliant move, first move. It's not a regular move. It's a brilliant idea. Yes. Yeah, you. You could go knight e7, but I'm not sure what do you do after this move. No checks, and his threats still remaining. Okay? So, and his threats are still remaining. Okay? 
So you gotta do something better. Something better needed here. First move, decoy, sacrifice. You don't have that many pieces you can sacrifice here, yeah? Two pieces, queen or a rook? Queen or a rook? It has to be a check too. Has to be a check move. Your moves have to be checked because otherwise he's gonna checkmate you on the square on G2 that it shows. You have to see the whole board, okay? in order to find this one because it's a long range move. Okay, just raise your hand. Don't need to make any noise. Yeah, just raise your hand. Just hand is good, I can see it. Okay, it's a sacrifice? Yeah, but he escapes. See, I mentioned he escapes here. And no more checks. No more checks. Okay? Well, I know, but you, you run out of checks. But he's, he still has this check. He still has this check and coming here. So he still has a lot of threats. Better. Better. Let's see now, who can find the move here? It's a decoy sacrifice, yes. No, better. Knight h6, unfortunately, I just take. And now I'm up more material and no threats. What else we can sacrifice with a check? What else? Any other piece you can see here? Any other piece sacrificed with a check? With a check. <clears throat> okay, go ahead. Correct. Queen F8 check. Sacrificing the queen. Usually, queen sacrifices are very hard to reject. Okay, because if you reject, you get mated. So in this particular example, if you go here now, you see the checkmate? Do you see the checkmate in one move? Correct. Knight is protecting it. That is a checkmate. Perfect. So he has to take, now, now what do you do if he takes? What do you do if he takes? Back rank, checkmate. You see how this one works? Not an easy one, I know. Not an easy one. But now you see what decoy means? Sacrificing a piece to forcing the opponent piece to a, squ a certain square you wanted. And that is called decoy. Decoy sacrifice. Let's do this one. This was a tough one, I know. But well, it took a long time. It's not like you found it quickly. Now, we're going to do some more decoys, okay? The next decoy is you want to win the queen, okay? White to play, 
and your goal is not to checkmate, okay, here. Your goal is to win his queen, okay? Don't rush yet, think. It's not so simple yet. You have to think a little bit. I want a few minutes thinking before you raise your hand. <laughs> think, think. <laughs> Right when I say two minutes, <laughs> you raise your hand. <laughs> okay, well, you might see the idea, but you have to do something. I'm pretty sure you need to think a little bit more. How about I give you another one minute to think? Not too long, one minute, think. Check your answer. Don't just look at one good move for you and assume you're gonna win. Look also what opponent can try to do. Okay? It's a decoy idea and you win at the end with a skewer. Skewer. Yeah. Please calm down. <laughs> yeah, ju just just raise your head, yeah? It's, it's best if you just raise your head, that'll be great. All right. So what's the first move here, huh? Yeah. Uh, queen F5. Here? Huh? You see that? Oh, <laughs> you'll take your queen. <laughs> Don't do that. Okay, let's see. Yeah, but you need to skewer, yeah? Queen C2 is just a normal move you're making. Now it's something very nice. Brilliant, I would say again, for this one. Do you see all the squares your queen can go to? All the squares. Very nice. Very, very nice. In order to see the combination, you have to see the first move first and see what it does, really. Tell us why you play this move. Because uh, later you can. So uh, he has to take the queen because queen is pinned. So he takes, and now look, his queen was close to the king. So by doing this, you move it further away now. And now, nice skewer. Go ahead. Queen, Queen all the way. See, that's why I say look at the long range moves, yeah? Look at that. See that? Check. He has to come up. And then you take the queen. Okay? Okay? So remember that. If you would have played this move right away, this wouldn't be effective. This wouldn't be effective because he would just go here. Okay? Now, he comes here, and if you take, he can take back. Okay? Now, so if he goes rook c7, you force him to take, and then you skewer him. Okay, what I want to do is I want to make sure that everyone here is familiar with tactical ideas, okay? So, everybody familiar with the fork? Yeah? Then, then let me ask you a question. You can fork with how many pieces? With how many pieces you can fork? Do you know the answer? So let's say you have, let me put all the pieces here. Let's say you have rook, queen, you have six pieces, right? On the board. King, queen, rook, knight, bishop, and pawn. With how many of these pieces you can fork with? What do you think? How many pieces you can fork with here? Yes? One. Because the queen can 
No, just an example. No, it's just an example. Like you can only fork with which piece? Only with the queen? Not with the knight? So let's see. How, with which pieces you can fork? Uh huh. So you can fork with all your pieces. The answer is okay. You can fork with all your pieces. Remember that. Now, next question is. Next question is. What about the pin? You can pin with. How many pieces? Can you pin with all six pieces? Think carefully, think carefully, pin is a little bit different. Can you fork with all your six pieces? Can you pin, can you imagine a pinning with a king? Pinning with a pawn? A pawn maybe, not really. Can you pin with a knight? So you can pin with how many pieces? How many pieces? <laughs> Correct answer. You can pin with three pieces, and now we will see which three pieces. Who can find a pin in this position? White to play. Find the pin. You should see it quickly. This is easy. Yes? I say pin it to win it. Yeah. You pin it and you win it. Next one. A little bit more difficult. Why to play? Who can find the pin with the queen now? You have to look at the whole board, right? Queen is a major piece. Can go from one side all the way to the other. Right? So you have to try to see how you can try to find it. Let's see now. Uh, queen to B1. That's a check. Oh, yeah. We're looking for a pin. We're looking for a pin here. Yes. Queen eight, eight. Correct. Correct. What do we call this in chess? Seven, seven. No? Pin, pin right? Bishop is pin. What kind of pin is this? We have even names for the pins, right? Two types of pins we have. This one is called... This one is called what kind of pin? Absolute pin. Absolute pin. That's one. If, let's say, this would have been a different piece, let's say. If this would have been a queen here, what kind of pin is this? Relative pin. Very good. Relative pin. So we have pins like that. Absolute pin means it's absolutely pinned. You cannot move it. Even if you want to, you can legally move it. It's pinned to your king, and we have a relative pin. Now, and let's see a pin with a rook. Now, who can find a pin with a rook here? Should be easy for you. Let's see. Look at the whole board. Yes. But rook eight is just a check. One. Better. You gotta pin the piece to win it, right? That's why pin to win. Yes? Me? No, no, him. Rook H3. Correct. Rook H3. And tell us please what kind of pin is this? Uh, absolute. absolute pin. Because if it's pinned to the king, that is called absolute pin. Correct. Now, now let's look at the skewers. How many pieces you can use to skewer? What do you think? How many pieces you can use to skewer? Let's see. Which two? Queen, because it's the most valuable piece. Rook. And bishop, right? Mm -hmm. So we can use three pieces to skewer, okay? Like in this position, who can find the skewer? Skewer with the queen. P1. 
Skin is when you pin the piece. Skewer is when you attack. And then he has to move away, you take it. Okay, now in this position, which move is the skewer? Queen A8. Correct. This is a skewer. Okay? You go check. Because if it steps up, we pick up the piece. Skewer. Okay? Now, another skewer. Block is thinking, okay, I have an extra queen here. Maybe I can try to win this game. But then suddenly comes a surprise. A big surprise here. In the form of a skewer. Let's see if you can find that surprise skewer here. Who can find the surprise skewer? And this way you can see with which pieces you can use to do pins, force, and skewers. Correct. Rook to h3, all the way here. And now check. And what we call this? No. Skewer. Skewer. Okay? Skewer, because you check the king. He moves away. That's a skewer. Okay? Pin is when you pin a piece to a king or queen or something else. But this is you attack right away, okay? And now, we come to the bishop. Why to play? Can you find a skewer with the bishop now? Yes. Skewer with the bishop. Who can find that bishop skewer here? Okay. So you remember, right? You can do that. It's like a pin. You can skewer with the same pieces like the pin. Yes. Bishop C8. Correct. Correct, yeah? Look at that. What do we call that? Uh, skewer. Skewer. Remember that. Pins, fork, skewers. These are very important to remember because you would win right now a lot of games by just knowing those which pieces can skewer, which pieces can pin, and always look for these tactical ideas. Double attack, fork, you know, skewer. So now you go check. He has to move away. You take the piece. Game is over. Okay? So always have to look for this ideas okay so let's start out from the beginning so everybody know today's lesson you can fork with how many pieces what is the answer oh. we can fork with how many pieces six. six all of your pieces okay how many pieces you can pin with three, three. 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 Which are pieces are they? Bishop. Now for skewer it's same thing. Bishop, rook, and a queen. And now the last position for today will be how to fork with the king. Have you thought about forking with the king? No. Black just played knight f6 to e4 saying check. Thinking it's a good move, maybe. He checked. But it's a bad move now. And who can find a fork here? Attacking two pieces at the same time. King Correct. King d3, attacking the bishop and the knight. That is a fork. fork. Okay, remember that. For example, if he also had a pawn here, you would have done the same thing. You would have come up and say fork. Okay? Because now he cannot move these ideas. Okay? Okay, very good. It's very important to remember these ideas, okay? So the pins and forks and skewers. And also we talk about decoy today. When you sacrifice something, it involves a decoy. You sacrifice something to force opponent to a certain square you want it to go.